So I thought it'd be interesting to go through and show you some of my uh, chains and what I do to set up certain things. Um, I think I talked already a little bit about the effects chain, but let's look at that again. And I'm just going to, um, there you go. You can sort of see it in the, on the side there. You can see the top of my, you can see my effects chain there. So it shows the order of plugins I have there. So at the top of my, um, my plugin, like I said, uh, I have an MO4000 uh, two-channel version. And what I want to do is um, I'm trying to, um, to soften the level of sound going through my chain. Because the worst thing I, that I want is red lights. I don't want to be clipping my plugins. I want everything to be going through the chain and, um, and have a good, clean signal. So what I do is um, I um, drop the level at the top of my chain by 5 dB. And that way, everything going through, hitting my EQ and different processes I have in there um, are, are a good, clean signal. Um, then I have um, an EQ. And a lot of times, you don't have time to uh, individually EQ a lot of the sound effects and stuff going through the chain. So I do a general roll off of everything. And I'll start at 60 hertz because a lot of um, issues at 60 hertz, hums and that sort of thing, and rumbles, if I just roll everything off below 60 hertz, it's going to get rid of a lot of that stuff. I'll also roll everything off at 10K. So I do a, a filter at 60 hertz and 10K just to keep just noises and that kind of stuff out. And that's a good place to start uh, for my chain. And then at the back of my chain, um, I'm putting the MO4000 multiband. And if you're an audio purist and like um, zero level to go through your chain, well, I dropped it 5 dB at the front of the chain, at the back end of the chain, I'm boosting it back up 5 dB. So I'm using the, um, the limiter portion. I'm still setting my ceiling at minus 2 or plus 18, but I'm boosting it back up by 5 dB. And that way, um, I'm 0 dB going all the way through my chain from start to, uh, to finish. So if I have material that's come in that's already been pre-mixed by my effects mixer, I've got some volume automation that I want to carry through the chain, um, I'm keeping that intact. But I'm also boosting it back up at the back end, and I'm adding some compression on the back end. And very gentle, I'm only, on the effects chain, I'm only at about minus 12 dB. So it's just sort of taking the edge off. So in that, um, in that little scene that has the gunshots, let's just go back in there. And I'm gonna play a little section that has um, some loud sound files and you can sort of see what's happening with my, um, with my uh, let's see if I can find that section again. I'm gonna hit play here. You can see it's hitting the limiter pretty hard on the top there, but only on the peaks there I'm, I'm seeing the ammo force out of uh, the uh, multi-band compressor get hit by some stuff. And then if you see my overall levels on the, uh, the pro limiter there, you can see how it's all um, capped and being maintained. So I have um, good loudness level, but I'm not peaking over, um, over minus two. Okay, so there's my, my BG chain. I'm doing I'm virtually the same thing as I did um, on the effects chain. Uh, this time on the top of my um, BG chain, and this actually isn't set up the way I normally do it. I'm, I'm, uh, I don't really boost um, the top and the bottom, but I am gonna, um, I do want to have this at uh, minus two and uh, minus two. I'm not um, dropping it the same amount because my BGs aren't gonna have the same kind of um, loud signal that my, um, that my effects chain would do. So um, I'll put an MO4000 two-channel at the beginning. Uh, it's actually a, um, a multi-mono. It's actually five channels worth um, at the top of the chain. And then the same thing. Uh, EQ on this one, I might actually roll off a little more on the BGs. I'm going to um, roll it off all the way up to, um, to 80. And the reason I do that is that's really where um, a lot of the stock sound effects libraries and stuff, the BGs, they get too much rumble in them. And I might even go up to, um, to 90 on those because really a lot of that low endy stuff is stuff that's going to interfere with my, my dialogue and stuff anyway. So that information where the backgrounds get a little too rumbly, I'm just going to take that off of my entire chain. And the same thing on the high end, I'm going to do the same thing there. I'm going to roll that down. I might even go down um, as much as all the way to 8K on that because really the backgrounds... Uh, we don't want to have it interfere with what's going on in our dialogue. So I'm going to, I'm going to roll it off um, high and low pass on that. And then um, on the back end of my, um, my chain, I'm not really showing it here. Um, I don't really need a lot of limiting, but I will put a, um, I'll put a multiband on the back end of that too. 
um, and it's it's only at about minus 13. So it's just a, a very little bit. So there's there's not a lot uh, going on in my BG chain, but just enough to um, to help a little bit with overall EQ and to keep from getting any any peaks um, that are happening. You might be surprised. The one thing that I um, I compress a little heavier. Um, are my Foley footsteps. Because the issue with um, Foley footsteps, if, um, if you play them at their natural level, what ends up happening, by the time you lower them enough under production, they're gonna start sounding really tappy. And in order to get the, um, the body that you want, the weight you want, I end up having to compress those a lot more. So if you look on my uh, compressor on the back end of the footsteps chain, I'm boosting at 5 dB, and I'll have my threshold for the uh, compressor all the way down to minus 25. So I, I really want, um, let me see if I can go to a, a little footstep section and we can sort of um, um, hear the effect of that or see what the uh, ML4000 is doing when we hit that. Here's a little section here. Let's play a little bit of, and I'm actually gonna solo the Foley. Let me find a section where they might be running or something. Let's hear a little, another little section here. And it might even hit that harder. Let's like, pull it down a little bit more. So I might uh, hit the compressor a lot harder on um, the footsteps, and that helps it when it's when it's underneath all the other stuff. Here, let's play that same session with everything going on. Even with all that other stuff going on, I'm still hearing my footsteps um, pop through in the track. So that's, you know, a lot of a lot of what um, I do in sound effects mixing is managing a lot of loud sound, and getting all that to still read through when everything else is going on. And that's uh, using the uh, ML4000 helps us to um, to manage a lot of those controls. Uh, one other thing that's kind of nice as of um, once uh, Pro Tools went 64-bit, I'm just going to show you my session setup window. Um, even though this is a 48K 24-bit session as far as what they give us, um, I run my session at 32-bit float because um, that maximizes the amount of uh, bits that the plugins are using, and it also gives me more headroom. So um, I have less uh, possibility of um, going into distortion. It gives me a little more um, headroom so all my different uh, kinds of files, the 24-bit files, 16-bit files, will all play in my session, um, but I'm still running my master session at 32-bit because um, that's giving us a lot more um, headroom and more maximize, uh, maximizing the hardware and what's going on in Pro Tools.